can play the game and you can act out the part Though you know it wasn't written for you Hi, this is Peter Asher. I had the privilege of uh, managing James Taylor for, for many years and also producing several of his albums. And we're here because we're in the process of remastering the first few of those albums, which has been an amazing fun and, and kind of a revelation, really, going back and listening to them this carefully. This is Bill Inglot. He's the man who put all this together and helped organize finding the original tapes and making sure everything worked and so on, and is in charge of the project. And we've been working together with, with uh, it's been a lot of fun, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting thing for me because uh, years and years ago, when I first wanted to get into recording, I coincidentally took my uh, recording engineering classes from uh, Bill Lazarus, who is the engineer of Sweet Baby James. Indeed he was, yeah. You know, which is kind of fascinating that I didn't take my lessons 50 years ago, but close. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to kind of be, be back in that and have, have the tapes with his name on the box. And you know, the whole thing about, you know, what, what we're always trying to do in these projects is use the original tapes, which when you're in the disc cutting world, sometimes isn't always possible because you may have some problems. But the great thing about all this material and all the records we're doing now is the tapes have been so well stored and cared for that uh, we've been using them all and there hasn't been, been any problem and everything is going to be sourced from the absolute original tapes. And that's what James was worried about, by the way. He was, he was, he's fully on board with the project, but when I was first talking about it, he went, really, are you sure the tapes are okay? And you know, we are, we are gonna use the real original ones. And I actually sent him after our first day I took a picture on my phone of this and said, yeah, you know, it's, we're, we're doing this and it's sounding great. And to which his response, which I have on my phone was, wow, carry on. So thank you. <laughs> we, are, we are authorized. Yeah. I mean, it is a fascinating thing sometimes to think you can actually get your hands on something. It's 50 years old that 50 years ago was done, but at the time it was so successful, it wasn't like it was just sort of, you know, stuck in a cupboard, not thought about for 50 years, but saw activity. And you don't always get that lucky. And uh, we've been really, uh, we've been very fortunate on this, this set that uh, everything has, has proved it to work really well. Yeah, we found like one tape anomaly on, on one tune where something weird had happened. The tape sounded totally peculiar. And we were able to find a, a substitute note on a, on a tape copy that had survived intact. So there's been a minute amounts of juggling. It's astonishing how how much all of it's actually working. We're pleasantly surprised. And you know, we've been working with original first pressings of the records to sort of see that we're putting ourselves in that spot that the original record was. And then with the advantage of some new technologies, and as Peter said, analog technology, mm -hmm. not some new digital thingamajig, to basically just clean your equipment. Working with getting the original sound as the pressing sounded, have a, some subtle improvements. Sometimes they're a little bit more than subtle, but they're all improvements. They're not something where, oh, let's make this sound this way, so let's do this. It's none of it's like that. It's really just what's coming off. No, we're resisting the, the temptation to change anything. It's a question of trying to get back to exactly what we did in the studio. And of course, in terms of the vinyl thing, what's a huge plus is that now the vinyl has become kind of a niche, a big niche, but, but a niche thing for purists. Everyone takes it much more seriously. When vinyl was all there was, some of it was pretty bad, and, and you really didn't know what kind of pressing you were going to get. And it depended on the kind of vinyl and where it was done and how many they'd done, and how many that stamper had done and all this complicated stuff. But now that, that people take vinyl seriously, it, you know, people know the difference and they care. And I think results of these days of work will be the best vinyl pressings that these albums have ever had. Make it rain.